Over the next three days, we are going to hear from national thought leaders on key issues facing Michigan and the nation at one of the most critical times in our history. While there are challenges certainly ahead for us, I couldn't be more excited as we explore how to best take them on. I'm truly honored to be the conference chair this year, and I want to thank the chamber team for putting together a fantastic event for us. So before we get started, I'd like to acknowledge the healthcare professionals at Henry Ford Health System and hospitals around this country who are working so hard and giving so much amid this pandemic we're facing. I'd also like to acknowledge all the frontline workers for their professionalism, dedication, and service to get us where we are today. And there are so many. So we think about where we are. Um, inside Henry Ford, we use the term pandemic to endemic. And so, so it's important for us to all remember that this pandemic is unfortunately far from over. And we'll be living with it for a long time to come. The path forward requires increased vaccinations, as you might expect me to say, and getting boosters when it's necessary. So we must remain diligent. And I thank you all for wearing your masks and doing all the things necessary to keep you and your family safe and your company safe as we uh, try to do the work that we do for the state. We've worked really hard this week to hold a safe event because we need to chart a path to collectively recover, to heal, and to thrive as a state. This year's theme is reimagining a healthy Michigan, which should be our top priority as we move into 2022. But we need to think more broadly about what it means to be, quote unquote, healthy. As a healthcare CEO, I'm fully aware that actual medical care accounts for between 10 and 20% of a person's overall health and well-being. Social and economic conditions play a far more significant role. And so for our communities to thrive, they need access to healthy food, clean water, safe and vibrant neighborhoods, gainful employment, affordable housing, transportation, and the unfettered access to voting. When any of these things fail, the health of individuals and communities can also fail. So when I, when I imagine a healthy Michigan, I envision a, bright, a vibrant platform of opportunities and the eradication of inherent structural barriers that prevent some people from meeting these core needs. So how do we get there? We chose to focus this year's conversation around three pillars that we believe strongly can help us reimagine Michigan's collective health. First pillar, accelerate our COVID-19 economic recovery and sustainability, something that I think we can all agree on should be a high priority. Accelerate, excuse me, advance racial justice and equity for all. When we think about some of the conversations we've been having as a city, as a region, as a state, as a nation the last 18 months, certainly believe that's a critical, important step for us as well. And then lastly, to invest in the health of our people and our communities. My sense is if we, if we accomplish these three things, we will emerge a more resilient state and community from this pandemic. So to accomplish this, we all need to see ourselves in the solution. Everyone has a role in improving someone's life. In our personal and professional lives, it's incumbent upon us to create that positive change. We have to move beyond Band-Aid solutions toward authentic, foundational, scalable change. And it has to be an intentional strategy that requires long-term investment and commitment. We also need to make foundational and enduring investments in our vulnerable communities, both urban and rural. And we've learned a lot during this pandemic. One lesson we've learned is that when we ignore basic challenges faced by people who have been historically left behind, we all experience negative and lasting effects on our economy, on our prosperity, and on the health of the communities we live in. And the reverse is also true. When we lift up those underserved, we all can experience success. We would ignore that lesson at our own peril. However, the agenda 
is packed this week with experts who can speak to how to create an equitable and prosperous society and put this lesson into practice. So when I think about the speaker lineup and you see some of the faces behind me, I'm ex truly excited because so many share a common mission of uplifting our communities. Detroiter and Walgreens CEO Roz Brewer, Harvard economist Raj Chetty, physician and best-selling author Nicholas Christakis, GM's Mark Royce, the Skillman Foundation's new CEO Angelique Power, and so many more. It's also a uniquely diverse group with nearly half of the speakers being women or people of color. Diversity matters for our economic future, and I am proud that this conference is bringing such a diverse group to Michigan center stage. As you're aware, much of this conference experience happens off stage. I encourage you to take advantage of all that is not inside this room, but off stage. I encourage you to drop by the Henry Ford Health Systems Healing Arts Gallery. I presume that most of you came through that as you entered this theater. At Henry Ford, we have long known that the healing power of culture and the arts. That's why we've been so intentional about infusing art into Henry Ford. Now more than ever, it's a time for us to harness the restorative impact and effects of art, and I hope you enjoy our exhibit. You know, as we come together in an authentic dialogue and we commit to measurable action, we want to generate a restorative experience for everyone. And that's what I'm hopeful that we can do. We can get ourselves right, we can get our state right, and then we can pull together and get through this pandemic. We are going to be living with the impact of COVID-19, unfortunately, for years to come. But together, we can take what this experience has taught us and shown us and create a more resilient and equitable society. We can create a higher quality of life for all and a better way to live. I wanna thank you all for your continued leadership and I hope you enjoy our conference. Thank you. Please welcome President and Chief Executive Officer of the Detroit Regional Chamber, Sandy Barua. All right. All right, everyone. So I, um, I just lost 20 bucks. I, I, I had it that Wright would fall at some point during his presentation, and I was going to get 20 bucks, and he didn't. So anyway, listen, uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, it is great to see you, Wright. Thank you for the opening, uh, and thank you for being our chair and our leader, especially uh, this year. It has been 28 months, 28 months, since we have all done this. Uh, yeah, and it's a little weird, right? It's just, it's just a little weird. Uh, I want to thank you all for wearing your masks. I know that, you know, it is, it's, it's still weird. I know we're all vaccinated, uh, but yeah, listen, given what's going on, you know, we said that the theater is going to be a mask, uh, a mask only zone, uh, as with the hallway and, and just a handful of other areas. So thank you, thank you for, for, for playing along. So we have um, been, it's been a minute since we've all been here, right? So, um, what I want to make sure that we are reminding people is, is that, A, this is not a Zoom meeting. You guys are actually in person, right? Three-dimensional. You can reach out and touch them, right? So you know what that means. So it means certain important things. One, please wear pants. OK, I know we're used to kind of working and going to things without pants. Please wear pants. Secondly. Unlike when you're at home, you are never on mute here. So while you might be thinking, God, I can't believe Brewer wore the pink shirt to open up Mackinac today, we can actually hear you when you say that because you're not on mute. And then finally, thanks to our longtime partnership with Detroit Public Television, you are always on camera. 
<laughs> so again, therefore, the pants are important. But finally, uh, and seriously, you know, listen, this is a little weird, right? We're all getting back in the hang of things. You know, as, as Wright talks about, you know, we're moving from a pandemic to an endemic. And we're going to talk about that, you know, as this conference goes on. You know, everyone's got a different comfort level with, you know, how we kind of readjust uh, to re-entering society. So let's all be uh, cognizant uh, of that. Now, of course, uh, one of the things that I, as the CEO of the chamber, are so incredibly flattered and honored with is that the, the sponsors that have been with us year after year after year have been with us this year and have been our partners as we've put on this conference in a slightly different way. First and foremost, I want to thank Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan. Is They're back as our premier diamond sponsor. I want to personally thank Dan Lepp for his leadership through this pandemic, for his support of the chamber, and his personal support for this, for this event. I also want to thank our uh, Ruby sponsors, General Motors, the Henry Ford Health System, Huntington Bank, the Ralph C. Wilson Jr. Foundation, and the W.K. Kellogg Foundation as our Ruby sponsors, and our platinum sponsors, Consumers Energy, Dow, DTE Energy, the State of Michigan's Michigan Economic Development Corporation, the Michigan Health and Hospital Association, PNC Bank, Rocket Mortgage, and UPS. Please, a round of applause for all of our sponsors. So as I mentioned, DPTV has been our partner now for over a decade, and they have helped us lift the veil off of this conference. It's no longer this mysterious thing that occurs just amongst elites on an island at the Grand Hotel. And we're so pleased that uh, DPTV broadcasts and streams uh, the, not just the proceedings that occur on this stage and the other platforms across the hotel, but our friend Christy McDonald is at the anchor desk in the parlor interviewing uh, our guests and our high profile speakers. Uh, and this conference is available to anybody really on any place on the planet, thanks to our friends at Detroit Public Television. Also, the Grand Hotel. For if, it's, if you're anything like me, it's been a while since you've been here, right? And it looks fabulous. <clears throat> Want to thank our friends and partners at the Grand Hotel. They've done a great job. If you haven't been there already, you will see the new swimming pool and the new pool house. It's the Esther Will Williams uh, 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 swimming uh, pool, whatever. It's the Esther Williams thing, you know. Um, <laughs> You know, the movie, the actress, all that. Anyway, it, was, it is absolutely, absolutely fabulous. Uh, now, you've probably already experienced this, just as you have back home, either in Grand Rapids or Detroit or Lansing or wherever you're from. You know, the labor shortage is a real thing, especially here on the island, and especially post Labor Day, because the kids are back in school in whatever form they're back in school. So taxis, long waits, ferries, long waits, bars, long waits for, you know, so everyone, just you know, bear with it. We're all in this together. Uh, just recognize that it is a um, uh, that it is a quite the labor crunch uh, up here. It wouldn't be uh, the Mackinac Policy Conference if I did not, you know, shill for Brad Williams, the head of our Political Action Committee. I told you to stay in the car. <laughs> Tonight, uh, I'm sorry, Wednesday night. Uh, 8 o'clock at the, you know, the pool house that I can't remember that's so beautiful that they spent all this money on. Uh, 8 o'clock, uh, tickets are either $50 or $100. You get a, you get a rubber ducky, and we're actually going to have rubber ducky races. They have this beautiful, you can see this wonderful uh, 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 serpentine uh, slide. Uh, I don't think Brad is going to go down it, but I do have a bottle of bourbon in my room. Uh, we're going to see if we can work on that. So I hope you'll join us for uh, for the pack, tickets are on sale uh, in, in the parlor. And again, uh, with thanks to Bank of America, our longtime friends and partner, we are happy to bring future leaders, actually they're already today's leaders, but to, uh, tomorrow's real you know, uh, premier leaders to the conference. Even though this is an event geared to C-suite leaders like those who are in this room, we wanted to ensure that future leaders have this opportunity to participate. So we bring a group of leaders that are part of the Mackinac 
uh, policy conference future leaders along with uh, the leaders that are associated with our partnership with Harvard Business School. So we're so glad and thankful for our ongoing partnership with Bank of America on that. Now, some serious business. So, listen, you know, as we said, you know, COVID is still out there, right? You know, people are still getting sick, and even though we're all vaccinated, we're all masked in the appropriate places, if you feel sick, you know, I wish we had strategically placed the trap doors, but we don't. So, we do need you to follow a couple rules. If you feel that you are experiencing something that's COVID, COVID-like, you know, COVID-related, or if you learn while you're up here that you had previously been in contact with someone who has tested positive uh, for COVID, you know, first we want you to do what you would do anyplace else. First of all, isolate yourself, right? Second thing, call this number, 313-550-7827. We're calling that the Chamber Bat Phone. That will be answered by a HIPAA certified staff member, and they will walk you through what you should do based on what your situation is. And the other thing that we are uh, promising all of you is that if we do have uh, a reason uh, to suspect someone has you know, a serious situation, we're gonna be transparent with you so you all know, you know and we'll do contact tracing, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So know that we're gonna be transparent with you and we'll also, uh, all this information, and we'll also communicate via the app, which I know you have all downloaded by, by now. So, our steps for this particular event, as Wright previewed, has been really consistent with the Detroit Regional Chamber's posture since the first day of COVID. And that was, is that the best way to regain not just our economic health, but our social health, was to do what is necessary, what is smart, to get through the virus and not to pretend that it doesn't exist. Because these things, you know, it's a 100-year virus. We know we're kind of reinventing the wheel every, every, every 100 years when this happened. So we need to ensure that we're doing this right. This is why the chamber took the lead in the masking up effort. And it's why we are taking the lead and being so aggressive in promoting the importance of vaccinations, and which is one of the reasons why we felt very comfortable to use the platform of the Mackinac Policy Conference to mandate vaccines for an event uh, like, like this. And as Wright Lassiter said, you know, we are starting to treat COVID more as an endemic as opposed to a pandemic. That means that this is serious, it's still here, it's a threat, but we can't pretend it doesn't exist, but nor can we live you know, the next months or years in our basements. You know, we have to find that middle ground, and we think that doing an event like this with the protocols that we have created is the, way, is the way to do it. And this is the first large event in Michigan that has this level of protocols, and we really feel that we are kind of setting an example for others in terms of how to do this right. And that was the guiding ethos of the chamber and our board. We were either going to do this event right or not at all. There was no middle ground for us. There was no laissez-faire, well, let's just hope for the best. We were gonna do this event, but we were gonna take all the precautions that we felt was necessary to keep you, Michigan's leaders, safe. And we weren't, going to, uh, we weren't gonna do it otherwise. And we had a lot of help, as you see on this slide, you know, including our board, the team at Henry Ford, our partners at Clear. We had a lot of advice putting this uh, together, and I'm very grateful for all of them. And by now, you also know that we all have wristbands, right? Red, yellow, and green. And you know, I hope you all have them. Hope you're having a little bit of fun with them. So obviously, green is, hey, you know, slobber all over me, give me a hug. No, not a problem. You know, yellow is that really awkward chicken wing or fist bump. Uh, and red, also, I, I am wearing a red, a red band. Now, a red band does not mean I don't want to talk to you or I don't want to be around you. If that's what it meant, why the hell are you here? I mean, you know, this is all about, you know, connecting with people and being with people, right? Red means that if you are that Seinfeld close talker guy, I'm gonna take a couple steps away from you, please don't be offended. That's all the red thing means, right? And I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna slobber all over for you. So, in terms of why we decided to proceed with this event, even with, you know, COVID and, you know, all the dynamics that are out there, comes down to a real basic principle, 
And that is, what does our society look like right now? America exists on a continuum of two ideas that are equally important. On one side of the continuum is we the people leave no soldier behind. It is our collective spirit. It's the things that we do as Americans, right, collective. On the other end of the spectrum are the things that make us the individualistic, you know, the, you know, the cowboy, you know, the self-reliance, you know, uh, personified by, you know, don't tread on me or live free or die. Both of these anchor ethoses of American culture are absolutely critical to the success of our nation. We wouldn't be the shining city on the hill. We wouldn't be the nation that people are literally dying to get into if we didn't have both of these elements. The challenge is right now is when we have this big shared challenge, this global pandemic, our society seems to be leaning a little over, if not a lot over, to the live free or die individualistic side, which makes collective action to address a common foe, COVID, really difficult. That's a hard thing to grapple with right now. You know, the, the collective effort that it took us to propel us to victory in World War II was a collective effort. Right? I mean, we saved tin and rubber and sugar. Uh, you know, we sent our, our, our young men you know, off to war, and many didn't come home. It was a collective effort. Even the months after 9-11, and we just celebrated the 20th uh, anniversary or acknowledged the 20th anniversary of 9-11, you know, our nation was united for several months after 9-11, but not now. And that is, uh, that, that is a challenge. And so that's the importance of this event, and frankly, events like it, that bring people, particularly leaders, from different sectors. We have government leaders here. We have corporate leaders here. We have civic leaders here. We have ph uh, philanthropy leaders here. You know, that is how we at least start chipping away at this individualistic side of the continuum to start bringing people together to make collective action. Because if we can't bring people together, if we can't resolve some of our differences, if we can't talk amongst ourselves and agree or disagree without being disagreeable, we're still going to be wrapped around this axle in terms of how we proceed and succeed through COVID. And that was a fundamental reason why we thought it was important to hold this event. And the other reason this event works and helps us kind of chip away at the individualistic side that we seem to be in at this particular moment is that civility still lives here at the Mackinac Policy Conference. And that's one of the things that we love about this conference and one of the things that we have been promoting year over year over year. Civility is a critical ingredient for compromise and compromise is the only way we get through big things. And right now, let's face it, our political system is not working as well as it needs to be, and it is up to those of us who influence the political system to step up to help the political system make some of these big decisions that we need to make as Americans. And civility in politics really boils down to three really simple things. One, it's relearning how to disagree without being disagreeable. It's understanding that in a democracy, compromise and middle ground is essential. It's not optional, it's essential. And third, having different policy approaches and different policy ideas does not make us enemies. Because at the end of the day, we're all Americans. And even though we value our individualistic live free or die side of the ethos, we also value and love our we the people side of the ledger as well. We believe so strongly in civility that it has been a focus of ours for several years. We have partnered uh, uh, for many years with my friends Nolan Finley of the Detroit News and Stephen Henderson of 
DET Radio, to create the Detroit Civility Project, to help leaders uh, across, across the state relearn those three principles I just enumerated. And in a long tradition here at the conference, uh, and in the tradition of civility, uh, Nolan and Stephen uh, and myself are, will be happy to welcome you Wednesday evening for On the Island, Off the Record, uh, down at the tent. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that one of the three of us will be happy to buy you a bourbon or two. And finally, as we welcome you here to the 41st Mackinac Policy Conference, uh, I want to remember uh, Senator Carl Levin, who was a giant in Washington, a steadfast lover and supporter of his, uh, his hometown of Detroit, but he was also a champion of civility. Senator Levin understood public service. He understood what it meant to have a point of view, but to understand and respect the point of view of others. And I think as we uh, kick off this conference, I cannot think of a more appropriate way to kick off the 2021 Mackinac Policy Conference other than to have a tribute to our late friend, the great Carl Levin. Thank you for joining us. Have a great conference. Stay safe.